is he figuring out his new role with the Detroit Pistons, man? He, I don't know. Like, I know Killian Hayes gets a lot of hate because, like, he's a frustrating player. I love Sadiq Bay, but, man, I just – I get frustrated with him sometimes, man. I really do with him trying to figure out his new role with the Pistons. So, I don't know. I'm frustrated with him. But, like, wh what were your thoughts on Sadiq Bay? I know we've been talking about him a lot lately, but let's just hear it, man. I thought over the last three games he's really kind of figured out, like, where his role is. Like, the Bucks game, uh, he was so hot, like, in the second quarter, and then he was hot coming out of the third quarter. I think what has impressed me with Sadiq Bey the most is him not settling for the three-point shot. Like, he, he's really – it seems like it's maybe three, four times a game. He will take it to the basket, and if the three-point shot's not there, he'll try to make some kind of layup happen or, you know, just try to create something other than the three-point shot. I think that's the next evolution of his game, and he, he's – He's starting to figure out, like, what he can get away with, whether it's, you know, not trying to, you know, get a foul. Because I think he forgets how big and strong he is because he's, like, 6'8", like, 230, 240. And he does get in foul trouble sometimes when he tries to take it uh, for a layup or a dunk or whatever. Um, I've been really impressed with him. I think the last two games he's really shown me uh, what type of player he could possibly be this season. Well, what kind of player do you think he's going to be this season? Like, what's the evolution for Sadiq Bey? I know you said Kawhi Leonard kind of has, like, the peak of Sadiq Bey, but, like, this season, what's his evolution in your mind? I'm thinking, like, a uh, young Trevor Ariza. Ooh, okay. I like that. You know, kind of, like, all over the place. I get that. I get that. That's cool. Um, Like I said, I just – I don't know why I get frustrated with Sadiq Bey, man. I just – I kind of want him to do less because I said this on the last podcast. I just think like he's hurting himself doing too much. Like I would like to see him pass out when, you know, guys are trying to run him off the line. I get sometimes you got to take that because that's what the defense is giving you. But I would like to see him pass out of a, of a three point shot instead of trying to go to the hole and then just do that Bojan thing, man, just relocate along the perimeter. I want him to like, kind of copy Bojan offensively. That's what I want to see from Sadiq Bey. I want to see that type of game being played. I don't, I don't, like, we got Ivy, we got Cade, you know, they can get to the rack. Let them create the shots. I don't need Sadiq Bey to do that. I need Sadiq Bey to be a shot maker, not a shot creator. If he has that in his bag where he can create plays from time to time for himself, that's fine. I just don't want to see it all the time during the games. I don't, I because I just think, like, I'm looking at Mikhail Bridges' numbers right here, right? Right now. They're both averaging 15 a game. He's averaging five and three, but he's shooting 64% from the field, 85% from the line, and 46% from the three-point line. Obviously, 64, 64% and 46% from the field and from the three-point line, probably not going to hold up all season. But Mikhail Bridges is one of those guys where it's like, Look, I know my role. I know what I'm good at. I know what I'm going to do. And I know I'm how to get paid. And, you know, maybe that's the trajectory I want Sadiq Bay to go. Copy Bojan's game offensively and then copy what Mikhail Bridges does for Phoenix and try to find a role that way for Detroit because we don't need him to be the shot creator. We don't need that. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm looking at the Sadiq's, you know, past couple of games. So, you know, he had 28 against Golden State, which yep. I thought was probably his best game of the season. Um, then he had 10 against Milwaukee, 7 against Atlanta, 7 against Atlanta. Like, it's just the consistency that you want to see from him. Yep. If your third option is getting you 15 points a game, you're a very good basketball team, I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, I look at another three in the league right now that's flourishing, and that's Cameron Johnson. Mm, yes. I don't even I don't even need Bay to play like Bogdanovich. I really don't. Like it I look at the the three and D's that make a living out of it, like Jay Crowder. Uh I mentioned Trevor Ariza, uh Cameron Johnson, who's a very uh good player. I, I think if Bay can kind of, you know, you know, play into that role instead of kind of you know, being the man, like being that first option, like he doesn't have to be, because you have Cade. You have Ivy, you have Bogey. Like realistically, Bay's like your fourth option right now. Um, and when when you kind of look at you know Bay's you know archetype, you kind of want to see him within that three and D mold of like you know guys that 
are really good defenders and can shoot that three-point shot. And I, I think that's where his game is turning into. I do like him taking it to the basket when he is ran off that three-point line because, you know, Kay's going to start getting doubled routinely now. Um, you can't keep, you know, putting up 30 points a game at halftime. Uh, Jaden Ivey is Jaden Ivey. We, we know what we're going to get out of him. And yep. I think if Bay's offense is going to open up a lot because a lot of teams are going to have the scouting report on Cade and Bogey and Jaden Ivey. And I, I think with Bay being your fourth option, I, I feel like that's such a luxury for the Pistons right now. 